got a few surprise guests stopping by. Be sure to join us. It's been a rough go for the IPFW men's basketball team so far in 2007-2008 as they have lost their first two games of the season to Big Ten foe Wisconsin and last Thursday night to the Crusaders of Valparaiso University. Tonight, the Dons hope to get into the win column for the first time as they get ready to entertain the Spartans of Manchester College. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Moss. Welcome to another edition of IPFW men's basketball here on CATV. I'm joined for the telecast tonight by Dave Scouten and Doc, it's been a rough go, but uh, two good opponents in Wisconsin and Valparaiso. Yeah, and in both of those games, Mike, uh, there were stretches of some pretty good basketball played by the Mastodons. Jerron Burrow, senior out of the Bahamas, averaging 13 and a half points and seven rebounds through the first couple of games, but he needs some help if the Dons are going to win. Yeah, he's going to need a lot of inside help, as we saw. Uh, Valpo was a pretty big club uh, inside, and of course, Wisconsin's always got some bangers inside. The Spartans of Manchester College are a Division III school, but they are 1-2. and two. They were on the road last night up in Angola against Tri-State. They lost 81-65, to 65, but they put up a fight for quite a while against the Thunder. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be one of those kinds of games where uh, Manchester has everything to gain and nothing to lose. Yeah, I think the Dons have felt about that uh, early on as well. It ought to be a good one. IPFW and Manchester College from here at the Memorial Coliseum. Stay tuned. Starting items in the opening tip are coming up next right here on CATV. Kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I want the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports. I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's gotta feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. What can Dinosaur Tracks teach us about those long extinct creatures? On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll discuss Professor Jim Farlow's recent trip to Spain to track those tracks. Do teachers teach differently from one country to another? Professor Jeff Nowak was in Macedonia this summer teaching teachers to teach. We'll talk to him about that experience and about the new NYSTEM program. And we'll talk with the campus coordinator of the United Way Fund Drive to find out more about where your contributions are going. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon. It's IPFW Mastodon Basketball, live from the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Brought to you by College 5 Sports on my network. Digital broadcast 33.2, Comcast 252. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum for tonight's NCAA Division I basketball match featuring the Spartans of Manchester College and the Mastodons of IPFW. I'm Mike Miles, along with Dave Scout and, and uh, Dave, uh, both these teams coming off of losses. IPFW last Thursday to Valparaiso here on the Coliseum floor, 74-64. And Manchester last night up in Angola against the Thunder of Tri-State University. They dropped that contest 81-65, so both teams hungry for a win. Yeah, they'll both come out hungry tonight, be looking for uh, a little consistency in their game that they haven't had maybe up to this point in time. Well, let's bring you the starters for tonight's game. First, the visitors who you see there in the gold uniforms with black numbers and black trim from Manchester College at one guard will be Corey Booker a 6-1 sophomore from Plymouth Indiana and another at a forward position I should say is Nathan Furch a 6-3 freshman from Walkerton Indiana at a guard spot their leading scorer Jamal Wade he's a six foot senior from Indianapolis the center spot will be Jeff Grabowski. He's a 6'5 junior from right here in Fort Wayne, played at Homestead High School. And uh, at another forward spot will be Doug Jackson, a 6'3 freshman from South Bend. The head coach in his fourth year, Brad Madborn. And now for the Mastodons of IPFW, their starters look like this. At one guard will be Jakari Johnson, a 6'4 junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan. At a forward spot, DeWitt Scott, a 6'6 senior from Chicago. Running the point will be Demetrius Johnson, a 6'4 senior from Cleveland, Ohio. At one forward will be Jerron Burroughs, a 6'8 senior from Nassau in the Bahamas. And also up front, Jelko Egrich, a 6'10 senior from Split, Croatia. The head coach at IPFW in his third year is Dane Fife. Our officials tonight will be Lamar Simpson, Park Wagenki, and Todd Van Sossen. And Doc, we were talking before about some possible keys to the game. 
for both teams. And um, of course, IPFW is going to have a decided height advantage tonight. So you know that they're going to want to try to get the ball inside. And they need to use that height advantage, uh, get the rebounding edge, whip the ball out, and move up the floor. We also heard some talk during the shoot around earlier today that the. Uh, may try to stretch out their defense in hopes of forcing some turnovers. Manchester turned the ball over 19 times last night against Tri-State. And uh, for Manchester, they've got to shoot well. Uh, they are actually, uh, they get, got to hit some shots with a decided height disadvantage. They got to get to the foul line where they're 83% as a team this season, 23 or 26 last night, and they got to hit the three-point shot as they did six times last night up in Angola. We're ready to go, IPFW in white, Manchester in gold. The ball up in the air, controlled by the Spartans of Manchester College. And a change in the uh, Spartan lineup, it looks like, instead of number 10, uh, it's number 45, Hanger. Well, first shot of the game is missed, but a put back by Wade, fight for the loose ball, and Dewitt Scott goes down the rebound. Here come the Dons, their first trip up the floor tonight. And they're dressed in their white home uniforms, blue trim, blue numbers, blue lettering. Demetrius Johnson is at the point. Left side pass, Jakari Johnson, inside feet attempted for Jerome Burroughs, knocked out of bounds. Possession remains. IPFW's, we played 34 seconds, no score on this Thanksgiving Eve. Thanks for joining us here on CATV. 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Here's Jakari Johnson again. They try to get the ball inside to Jerron Burroughs. Kicks it out. Scott for a three. Yes. DeWitt Scott, the senior from Chicago. There's the uh, shot we haven't seen a lot out of uh, DeWitt yet this season. But hopefully we see a lot before the season's over. There's a scrap and a loose ball. And you got players on the floor fighting for it. It'll be a jump ball called. And on the possession, it will go to IPFW. They played exactly one minute. Three nothing in favor of the Mastodons. Michelle Gregorich will inbound it to Demetrius Johnson. Looks like Manchester going to start out in a man-to-man -man defense. Burroughs wants to move, loses possession of the ball. Another scrap for it, and foul's going to be called, I believe, on IPFW. Yeah. Juwan's gonna draw number one. Yeah, that's one thing that IPFW has to do is to stay out of foul trouble. So here are the Spartans of Manchester College. They are a member of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. Jackson is cut off, gets it to Wade. Wade from Indianapolis, averaging over 17 points a game. Pass intended for Marcus Hanger, and it's knocked out of bounds. 18 seconds left on the 30, uh, 35 second shot clock, 18 29 left on the first half game clock. Manchester didn't bend the basketball right in front of the IPFW bench. Trying to take it. Oh, a little traveling call yeah. on Doug Jackson. Trying to do a little bit too much, Dave. A little pirouette there that didn't quite turn out right. Second turnover on Manchester. So here come the Dons up the court. Again, going from right to left on your TV screen here in the first half. DeWitt Scott up to Johnson. They work it around to Jakari Johnson. Agarich on the wing, launches a three and hits. So Agarich makes it 6-0 IPFW. That's a shot that Z can hit pretty regularly when he's left open. Wade comes right back with a tray for Manchester, so the Spartans are on the board. Just under 18 minutes to go on a half. Long three, launched up by Scott, no good, but Jakari Johnson with the offensive rebound. IPFW will now work their offense. Jakari Johnson in the paint, pull up jumper is good. Jakari had 18 points against Valpo last Thursday night. Nice mix in the IPFW offense with the uh, driving down the lane and taking the threes. And we'll see what Manchester can come up with. Well, wanting to do some driving is Hanger. Hanger had 18 points last night against Tri-State. Turnaround jumper no good by Jeff Grabowski, the former Homestead Spartan. The Dons work it up the floor. Scott puts it off the glass and in, but they're going to disallow the basket. Yeah, foul on the floor. 
Incidental retained possession. The foul was on Nathan Furch, his first, team first. Comes with 17-15 left in the half. Demetrius Johnson looking for somebody in white to get the ball to, and he gets it to Jakari, back to Demetrius, inside to Burroughs, he's cut off. Inside again, turnaround jumper, no good by Burroughs, but Kino, as he is called, was fouled. He'll shoot two when the foul is on Furch, his second. Manchester doesn't have anyone to match the height of Burroughs and uh, Jerick, so IPFW sh should be able to have a good inside game tonight. Jerome Burroughs, a 50% foul shooter thus far through the first two games, seven out of 14, but that one was perfect. Nine three is our score, IPFW on top, 17.05 left in the first half. Free throw number two coming for Jaron Burroughs and it's in the air and that's good as well. Good start at the line for IPFW, two for two. Jake Cozio comes in for Nathan Furch. Cozio is a 6'2 senior from New Carlisle, Indiana. And here come the Spartans on the attack. Work the perimeter, see if they can get a backdoor cutter. IPFW's man-to-man -man defense is very sticky right now. A little pull-up jumper by Grabowski is good. Grabowski is averaging over 12 points a game. Makes our score 10 to five. IPFW lead is five. Scott thought about a three, gets it inside to Burroughs. Burroughs double teamed, spin move, gets the lucky bounce off the rim and in. Burroughs now with four. And it's 12 to five, IPFW back. Oh, nice block by Johnson. Yeah, Demetrius got up in the air to uh, thwart that drive to the basket. Jackson was rejected. Coming in is Corey Booker, number 10, replacing Marcus Hanger. Spartans went bound the basketball underneath their own basket. Passes to Booker. PFW win a man-to-man -man defense, ball nearly taken away. Worked the ball in the left corner, long three-pointer off the rim, no good. Burroughs comes up with the rebound, gets it to Demetrius Johnson. Here come the Dons on the run. Demetrius looking inside for Egerich off the glass and in. Great feed, great look underneath, and uh, Z had an easy shot. Egerich now with five. Back comes Manchester. Booker, watched by Demetrius Johnson. Under 16 minutes left here in the first half. 14-5 our score, IPFW with the lead. Wade, and there's gonna be a reach-in foul called on Jakari Johnson, his first, team second, and there is timeout on the floor. 15-43 left in the half. It's IPFW 14, Manchester five, and you're watching IPFW basketball on CATV. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Hi, I'm Russell Simmons. Today I want to talk to you about a very important subject, and it's cruelty to animals. Emmy was a victim of cruelty, and someone did something about it. Someone called the ASPCA and put an end to it, because Emmy can't talk. The fact is, animals are abused all over this country, and people sit by and do nothing. It's not slick, or fly, or cool, or none of that. It's just cruel. If you're aware of any animal abuse, go to ASPCA.org to find out what you can do. Now, make a difference. She can't do it for herself. Welcome back, everybody, to the Memorial Coliseum. 14-5 is our score. IPFW on top of Manchester. 15-43 left in the first half. The Spartans are inbound on the basketball. And going from right to left, they're in the gold uniforms on your TV screen. Corey Booker to inbound on the basketball to Doug Jackson. Jackson watched by Jerron Burroughs. Wanted to make a baseline drive. 
was Cozio when he travels. Yeah, the good defense uh, threw him off balance a little bit, and he had to travel. Three turnovers now on Manchester. IPFW yet knock on wood to turn the ball over. Demetrius Johnson gets the ball on the wing to Jakari, to Burroughs, bounce pass underneath Johnson. Little keep away. And a three second call on IPFW. Coming in from Manchester will be Jerry Ford, a 5'11 senior out of Lafayette, Indiana. And you see Dane Fife in his third year at the helm of the IPFW men's program. Booker tried to find his teammate Jackson, but Doug stopped running. The ball went out of bounds. Yeah, the uh, man had kept moving toward the basket. He'd have had a great bounce pass, probably a basket. Four turnovers on Manchester last night. They turned the ball over 19 times up at Tri-State. Egerich, top of the key, gets it to Jakari Johnson. Manchester staying in that man-to-man -man defense. Egerich for three, off the rim, no. Jackson with the board, gets it up to Ford. Here come the Spartans on the run. Jerry Ford, watched by Jakari Johnson. Spin move, and a shot is blocked by Egerich. As Grabowski tried to... Get it. Nice block. Couldn't come up with the ball. 14 7 now after that Manchester basket. Eggerich to Jakari Johnson. Kicks it out. Burroughs being hounded by Ford. Here's Demetrius Johnson. Going into the basically. Oh, nice feed to Jakari Johnson off the glass and in. Jakari now with four points. Back comes Manchester, trying to work the ball inside. Booker has a shot partially blocked by Demetrius Johnson. IPFW on the run. Pass intended for Jakari Johnson, just a little too far. Yeah, both teams have now made it a, a long pass that if the man had kept going, he could have come up with it, but they're trying to move the ball up the floor. A couple of substitutions. Mitch Schaefer, a 6'4 freshman from Fort Wayne in for Manchester and Ben Botts, a highly touted freshman from Muncie Central High School. He's on the floor for Dane Fife's IPFW Mastodons. Booker with the basketball now to Tony Harris, also on the floor for the first time tonight. His shot, no good. Egerich is going to be fouled by Booker. Battle for the rebound. Also in the IPFW lineup is uh, Zach Plackmeyer, number 10. First foul on Booker, third team foul. And Plackmeyer will bring the ball up. Boy, he can get hot from the outside. Yeah, both these freshman guards can uh, really contribute. Burroughs whips it around. Scott, three, yes. DeWitt Scott with his second tray. 19-7 in favor of IPFW. Booker gets it up top to Harris. Harris. On the wing to Cozio. Cozio watched by Botts. 17 on the shot clock. We're nearing the 13-minute mark of the first half here at the Coliseum. Inside pass intended for Jay Cozio, and he is fouled. Ben Botts picks up his first foul. 13.01 left on the big clock above center court here at the Coliseum. Coming in is Lorenzo Griffin, or I'm sorry, make that Logan Smith. Logan Smith in for Manchester. He's a 6'2 sophomore from Lima, Ohio. Manchester with the basketball. Trying to work it inside. Pass was too high. Turnover. Afford to handle. Turnover number five for Manchester. And up to this point, IPFW has just two turnovers, which is terrific. Well, here come the Dons up the floor. You see Botts. Plackmeyer back to Botts. Inside again to Burroughs. Kicks it out. Scott, another three ball. He's feeling it tonight. Third tray for DeWitt Scott. He now has nine points. The lead up to 15 at 22 to 7. Let's see how the Spartans respond. Harris. Now dribbles up top of the key. Working around. Here's Booker. 
have to drive on Plackemeyer, and he's fouled by Plackemeyer before the shot. First foul on Zach, fourth foul on the Mastodons. Good hard. Good hard nose defense by the Mastodon. Well, Manchester to win bound the basketball. Now, James Reed is on the floor, wears number four for the Spartans. Works it on the wing to Smith. 12.07 to go in the half. Long shot, three pointer is good by Corey Booker. Second tray by Manchester. Shot rejected. DeWitt Scott from the corner off the iron, no good, but the ball goes off the hands of James Reed out of bounds, and we have another timeout. 11.49 left until halftime. It's the Mastodons 22, the Spartans 10, and this is IPFW Basketball on CATV. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. Combine ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven-safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. Mm. So, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. The Coliseum 22 10 is our score. IPFW on top of Manchester. Dave, IPFW hitting well from the floor thus far. Yeah, they're shooting very well. And at the three point line, four for seven. Pat Dave. Lepper on the floor, I'm sorry, for IPFW. He inbounds a basketball. Bots with a pull up drive blocked. Blocked nicely by Tony Harris. Back comes Manchester. Well, wanting to do some work is Reed. Gets it to Booker. 11 and a half minutes left in the half. 22 10 is our score. Harris watched by Burroughs. 15 on the shot clock. Yep. See who wants to drive now. Logan Smith watched by Leper. Five on the clock. Three pointer on the way and good by Mitch Schaefer. Talked about the ability to hit the three ball. He's a freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Burles is fouled at the other end. And it looks like it's going to be Smith that picks up the foul, his first. Team fourth. 11.02 left on the clock. Jamal Wade back in for Manchester. It'll be IPFW basketball underneath their own basket. Egerich to inbound it, gets it to Botts. Shot off the rim, no good. Burroughs with an offensive board. Plackemeyer from long distance, that's no good. Tap by Leper, no good. And we're gonna have an over the back foul called on Pat Leper. Yeah, he was aggressive that time underneath the basket, so I don't think Coach Fife will be too upset with that particular call. He was going for the ball. 10.51 left in the half. It's 22-13, IPFW. With the lead, Manchester in the gold uniforms with the basketball. Way to give the ball to Reed. And work it around to Schaefer. Tony Harris. Try to run a weave. Taking it strong off the glass and in is Logan Smith. And IPFW that time didn't rotate over fast enough to cut off the drive to the basket. Manchester hit their last three shots from the floor. Plackemeyer takes it off the rim and in. The freshman with his first points of the night. 
back comes Manchester. Looks like the Spartans want to increase the tempo, Doc. Yeah, they'd like to pick it up, keep it going. Long three-pointer off the rim, no good by Smith. Egerich with the rebound, here comes IPFW. Plackemeyer has it knocked off his hands out of bounds. IPFW to retain possession. Jeff Grabowski back in for Manchester. And uh, also going to come in is Tyler Hinn. Tyler is a 6'4 freshman from Huntington. Making his first appearance of the night, he replaces Tony Harris. 9.58 left in the half. 24-15 our score. IPFW on top. Egerich gets it to Burroughs. Back up top to Plackemeyer. Now the Dons are on their offense. Leper fakes a three. And they work it around. Here's Botts out of Muncie Central. Well, he knocked down four trays up in Wisconsin in the season opener. Plackemeyer kicks it out. Botts for three. Yes. It was good patience on the offense that time. They worked the ball around the horn, got the shot they wanted. Botts can bury that shot. And the IPFW lead is 12 at 27 15. We're under nine and a half minutes left in the first half. Jamal Wade tries to get around Plackemeyer. Forces up a shot, no good. Burrows off the glass. Don's on the run. Plackemeyer gets the leper. Pat will launch a three off the back of the iron, no good. Rebounding it is Jamal Wade out of Indianapolis. Wade a senior. Long three, I mean long, in and out by yeah, Reed. It's the NBA three. Good feed from Wade. Shot missed underneath by Garbowski. Two cracks at it for Manchester. They come up short. Now here comes IPFW. Bots. To Leper. Plackemeyer to Burroughs in the low post. Back up top. Plackemeyer for three. Off the rim, no. Burroughs with the offensive putback. Yes. Good long arm span. Picked off the ball, put it back in. Jerron Burroughs now with six points here in the first half. We're under eight and a half minutes. Oh, nice feed inside the hen, but. An offensive foul is going to be called instead. Negates a Spartan basket as Reed is called for the charge. Good positioning that time defensively by Jerron Bur Burroughs. Took the charge. Well, Chris Perkins making his first appearance tonight for IPFW along with Nick Luttrell. Perkins, a 6'2 senior from Maywood, Illinois, and Nick Luttrell is a 6'8 freshman from Nashville, Tennessee. Demetrius Johnson also back on the floor. He's a senior who began his collegiate career at Kent State University. And he will run the show from the point guard position. He tries to get it to Latrell down low. Latrell wants to drive on Reed. Spin move, shot off the glass, no good, but we have a whistle and a foul. And the freshman Nick Latrell will go to the line to shoot two. I think we'll see a lot of uh, increased playing time for Nick as the season moves along. He's a big kid. He's learning how to make those moves. That foul was on Marcus Hanger, his first. So here is Latrell. First of two free throws is good. And we'll get him another one here. PFW so far perfect. Three for three at the stripe. And the second one is off the rim. Burroughs, however, with an offensive board to put back no good. Tapped out to Hanger. And Marcus will bring the ball up over midcourt. Shoots it down to Hen. Little baseline jumper off the rim, no good. Leper with the rebound for the Dons. And here comes Demetrius Johnson up the floor. Again, IPFW in white tonight. Going from left to right on your TV screen in the first half. Pat Leper, top of the key, gets it to Perkins. Perkins to Johnson, cross corner pass to Burroughs. Little 15 footer. Way off the mark. Should have been a 13-footer. Yeah. James Reed with the rebound. Gets it to Hanger. Hanger to Hen. Back up top to Reed. IPFW staying in a man-to-man -man defense with 7.15 to go here in the first half. Reed kicks it out. Long three-pointer is perfect by Logan Smith. He's got a deuce and a tray for five points. In fact, he has scored the last five Manchester points. Now the Spartans trail by 12, 30 to 18. 
We're under seven minutes in the first half. Perkins, little pull-up jumper, strong. Latrell tried to get the offensive board, and no good. Grabowski beat him to the ball. Now here's Hanger. Hanger, back to Grabowski. Watch by Latrell. Back to the top of the key. Read a long three, that's no good. Latrell, skies high for the board. Outlets it to Demetrius Johnson. Don's on the run, Leper pulls up, pops it through. Pat Leper, his first points of the night. 32-18, now the score was 624 to go in the first half. 14 point lead might be the biggest of the night. I think it is. Shot is no good by Hanger. Leper with the ball on the Don's again on the move. Nice pass to Perkins from Demetrius Johnson off the glass and in. And Manchester says enough is enough. We need to call a timeout with 6.08 left in the half, a 30 second timeout. As you see, the gold clad Spartans of Manchester College. This is the ninth meeting all time between these two schools when IPFW was a Division II school. And even before that. And before that, they first met back in 1976 77. Manchester w won that first game, 68 64. And the last time these two teams met was back in the 89-90 campaign, and it was IPFW coming out on top that time, 74 to 57. Yeah, when they met back in the 70s, uh, they were both uh, Division III schools. I'll be darn good. Look at some of the fans here at the Coliseum tonight to watch this Thanksgiving Eve encounter between Manchester and IPFW. It'll be Manchester basketball. Jamal Wade. Well, this is interesting. I see a, a number 15, and I don't have a 15 in my scorebook. To do some uh, research inside. And the Grabowski has it taken away by Jakari Johnson to DeWitt Scott. 12 footer short. Yeah, DeWitt got up but in here. Demetrius Johnson with the steal to Latrell off the glass and in. Johnson to Latrell. Nice dish from uh, Demetrius over to Latrell. 36 18 in favor of IPFW. Tony Harris watched by DeWitt Scott. Wade nearly had his pocket picked by Chris Perkins. Now they go around the other side. Loose ball, Perkins dies for it, picks it up. We got Jakari Johnson picks it up to Demetrius Johnson. Back at Jakari, underneath has it stripped. Nice play there by Doug Jackson. Yeah, got him from behind. Back come the Spartans, errant pass out of bounds. Ball goes back over to IPFW. And we have a timeout on the floor. Media timeout or under eight timeout comes with 4.57 left. 36-18 IPFW, and you're, listening, you're watching rather IPFW basketball on CATV. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy with affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Yep. Playing in his second game. IPFW comfortably out in front right now, 36-18. And they uh, own the basketball, heading from left to right on your TV screen here in the first half. Demetrius Johnson, little perimeter passing. Scott looking for Latrell in the low post. Nick, reverse layup off the rim, no good, but knocked out of bounds by Manchester. 
It'll yeah. remain IPFW basketball. Nice move by the big fella, just couldn't get it uh, to fall in. 4.39 left in the first half. Demetrius Johnson underneath his own basket. Gets it to Jakari. Nice little move by the junior from Grand Rapids. He had the slightest hint of daylight and took it he to the hoop. He has a half a dozen. The lead now up to 20 at 38 to 18. Nice little move and uh, oh, an offensive foul gonna be called on Tyler Hen. That's a bit of a surprise. Good defense by IPFW. Yeah. Hen's first personal. That is the fifth, uh, make that seventh team foul, but it was a player control foul, so there's no free throw shooting just yet. Here comes Chris Perkins up top to Scott, working around the horn. Demetrius Johnson, he's gonna drive himself, and he is fouled on the way up. And the foul's gonna be on Jamal Wade. That is his first, team eighth. 4-10 left in the half, and let's see if it's a shooting foul or a one and one. It is a shooting foul. So Demetrius will get two. He knocks down the first one. PFW so far, four of five at the strike. That one's good as well. And now five of six at the free throw line. That's about 83%. Nearing the four minute mark. Manchester with the basketball. Pass taken away by Jakari Johnson. He's one on three, gets it to DeWitt Scott. Back to Jakari. And a traveling call called on Jakari Johnson. He can't believe it. Again, we have a timeout on the floor. 3.51 left in the first half. It's IPFW 40, Manchester 18. And you're watching IPFW basketball on CATV. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And give it a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. I can no longer make my mortgage payment. We won't be able to make our mortgage. I can't pay my mortgage right now. Life throws everyone lots of curves. Sometimes it's a loss of income or an expensive health emergency. If that happens to you, call the people expecting your payment and let them know. They'll want to work something out. So at the first sign of payment trouble, call. They can help, but only if they know you need help. To learn more, visit HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. That's HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. Back at the Coliseum, a replay of activity here. Nice little move there, Dave. Jakari Johnson yeah. slicing through. Here's a case where his slender build comes into his advantage. He saw the daylight and went right to it. Now here's Marcus Hanger with the ball for Manchester. There's Jamal Wade washed by Ben Botts. If W sticking their man to man defense. Jackson and he palms the basketball. And that's a special uh, point of emphasis this year for NCAA officials. 11, I'm sorry, Dave. Watch for that uh, carrying the ball. 11 turnovers now on Manchester compared to just three for the PFW Mastodons. Plackemeyer, top of the key. Looks, gets it to Jakari Johnson, back to Zach. He drives a baseline finger roll shot, no good. Wade up with the rebound for the Spartans. Back they come. Wade spin moves, forces a shot up, and draws the foul on Ben Botts. That's a good senior move there, Dave. Yes, it was. Botts picks up his second personal. Had him on his hip and took it on in and got the foul. 16 fouls now on IPFW. A couple of reinforcements at the scorer's table. Jamal Wade will shoot a pair. And the first one is good. He now has four points. Jerron Burroughs and Chris Perkins back on the floor. Ben Botts and Jakari Johnson have a seat. 
One more free throw coming for Jamal Wade. Came into this game hitting 84% of his free throws as a team. Manchester hitting 83% of their free throw attempts and Wade knocks the second one down as well. Dave, those are the first two free throws of the night for the Manchester Spartans. They fired up 26 freebies last night and made 23 of them. That's a good sign for IPFW. Don't put them at the line. Eggerich up top. Perkins will launch a three off the back of the rim. No good. Plackenmeyer with the offensive board. IPFW will reload. Plackenmeyer up top. Scott going for another tray. Yes. Do it, Scott, with four three point three four three field goals rather here in the first half. <coughs> 43 20. Yeah, the wits loosened up tonight. Harris wants to drive on Egerich. Strong with the shot. Burrows with the rebound. To Plackemeyer, the Don's on the run. Plackemeyer to Scott. Burrows, he'll take it strong. Turnaround shot. Good. Burrows with eight points. IPFW as a team hitting nearly 50% of their shots from the floor. We're in the two minute mark here in the first half. Hanger partially blocked by Scott. Pass intended for Burroughs, picked off by Jackson. And Doug will left handed off the glass and in. Yeah, the transition basketball that time caught up with the Dons and uh, they lost track of their men defensively. Well, that didn't please head coach Dane Fife. He'll call a 30. Second time out, 151 left in the half. And Dave, we were talking earlier, one of the keys to the game for Manchester was the having to hit threes. Well, they fired up nine three-point shots thus far and have been successful on four of them. But overall, the Spartans hitting just 33% of their shots yeah. in the first half, yeah. eight of 24. They've uh, tried to take the ball to the hoop and had their shots altered several times along the way. Let's see, Scott, Burroughs, Perkins, Demetrius Johnson, and Jelko Egerich now. They're on the floor for the blue and white. It's our big lineup in there now, Mike. Demetrius Johnson to Egerich, top of the key, back to Meech as they call him. Here's Burroughs. He wants to work on Grabowski. Nice move, reverse layup, good. And Jerron Burroughs now in double figures with 10 points. And we got a reach in foul. I think. It'll be Manchester basketball with a minute and a half left in the half. There is Hanger. Hands it off to Jake Cozio. Give and go pass back to Cozio, watched by Demetrius Johnson, back up top. Jackson is hacked by Burroughs, 134 fouls the other 34. And there'll be a couple of free throws. Manchester is still emphasizing getting that ball inside, driving to the hoop. Now for Jerron Burroughs, that is personal foul number two. Team foul number seven. And here is Doug Jackson. Jackson through three games is a perfect three of three at the line. Make it 4 of 4 as the first free throw gets the friendly bounce. And that keeps Manchester perfect for the night, three for three. Jakari Johnson in for Jerron Burroughs for IPFW. Cozio out. And Lorenzo Griffin in for Manchester. Another free throw coming for Doug Jackson. Looking for his fourth point of the night, and no good. Jakari Johnson with the rebound. Gives it over to Demetrius Johnson. 47-23, IPFW in front. who are in the final minute and change here in the first half. Perkins, watched by Jackson. Gets out to Demetrius Johnson. 15 on the shot clock. 54 on the game clock. Jakari. Drive on Hanger. Now he wants to drive on Grabowski. Five on the shot clock. Demetrius Johnson inside for the shot uh, by Egerich uh, is too strong. Z fights for the rebound, but it's picked up by Manchester. 35 seconds left in the half. Hanger nearly traveled. And now traveling is called on Griffin. 31 and a half 
seconds left in the half. Yeah, that last uh, field goal attempt for IPFW by uh, Z. He was too wide open. <laughs> Mitch Schaefer back on the floor for Manchester for this final half minute of the first half. And a little perspiration being mopped up uh, across from our location in front of the IPFW cheerleaders. And it's Thanksgiving weekend, tomorrow being Thanksgiving Day. I want to wish everybody a happy, and safe Thanksgiving. If anybody's doing any traveling. Well, here comes Demetrius Johnson. The shot clock is off. IPFW can play for the final shot here of the first half. Jakari Johnson on the wing. He's past his man. He wants to try the baseline. Cut off by Grabowski. And now time is called by one of the officials. I believe that's Lamont Simpson. Yeah, I think he found some more moisture on the floor and wanted to uh, get that taken care of before. Anybody gets hurt? Yep. 14.6 seconds left here in the first half. The NIPFW in front, 47-23. As the Dons look for win number one of the 2007-2008 season. And let's see. Youngster is getting a workout with that squeegee mop. But it looks like everything is okay and play about to resume. Joko Egerich will inbound it underneath his own basket. And the shot clock is off. Don't worry about that. And we're ready to go. Kicks it out to Z to Demetrius Johnson. And now we're down to 10 seconds left in the half. Now the Don should run their play. Johnson wants to drive. Kicks it off into the corner to Z. Gets it back to Jakari. Three-pointer. Good. Boy, worked that to perfection. And the horn goes off. And that'll signal the end to our first 20 minutes of action. Timing was perfect. Boy, it sure was. And that's... Uh, for Johnson, his fourth field goal was first tray. Teams, as we said, heading to the locker room. IPFW out in front of Manchester at 50 to 23. And we'll be back in a few moments right here on CATV. I guess I'm like most kids. I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. You might be surprised to know the biggest dangers your pet faces are everyday dangers, like drinking from puddles, being boarded, squirrels in the park, and fleas and ticks. Being a pet is risky business. That's why it's important for every pet to receive a risk assessment and wellness exam twice a year. A risk assessment from your veterinary professionals helps create a unique risk profile for your dog or cat. Your veterinarian can then develop a disease protection plan that's right for your pet and the disease threats in your area. Best of all, twice a year exams help your veterinarian detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So reduce the risks. Contact your veterinarian today for your pet's wellness exam because being a pet is risky business. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. What can Dinosaur Tracks teach us about those long extinct creatures? On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll discuss Professor Jim Farlow's recent trip to Spain to track those tracks. Do teachers teach differently from one country to another? Professor Jeff Nowak was in Macedonia this summer teaching teachers to teach. We'll talk to him about that experience and about the new NYSTEM program. And we'll talk with the campus coordinator of the United Way Fund Drive to find out more about where your contributions are going. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions? Eat your pizza, man. Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum, where it's halftime of our game between the IPFW Macedons and the Manchester uh, Spartans. And at the uh, break, it's IPFW uh, comfortably ahead by a score of 50 to 23. Dunn's got off to a good start. Back-to-back -back three point field goals by DeWitt Scott and Jelko Egrich put them up six to nothing. They've never trailed. And uh, they have done rather well hitting uh, half their shots from the floor. We'll talk more about that as we get a look at the graphic. IPFW 19 of 38 from the floor for 50%. 7 of 14 from three point range, also 50%. And they've converted five of their six free throw opportunities. That's an 83% success rate. They also have had 13 assists, pulled down 23 rebounds, and they've picked up three steals. For the Manchester Spartans, they are 33% from the floor, 8 of 24 shooting. They have converted four of their nine three-point opportunities for 45%, and they have hit three of their four free throws for 75%. They have had three assists, have been out-rebounded. As we said, IPFW had 23. Manchester came up with 14 boards, and the Spartans have picked up one steal. Those are the team numbers. We'll get you some individual numbers here momentarily. We can tell you that IPFW has two players in double figures. DeWitt Scott with 12 points, and those are four three-point field goals out of six three-point attempts. Ten points for Jerron Burroughs. Nine points from Jakari Johnson. And for Manchester, a couple of players with five points. Uh, you see uh, Logan Smith and Jamal Wade. And uh, the former Homestead Spartan, Jeff Grabowski, has four. But IPFW looking for their first win of this 2007-2008 season. Well, they're enjoying the lead. And we'll see what happens when they come out uh, for the second 20 minutes of play. Again, it's Thanksgiving Eve. And I know the IPFW family wants to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And... Uh, Again, we'll come back, we'll take a break and uh, talk more about what's been happening here at the university. But again, it's halftime, 50 to 23, IPFW on top of Manchester. And we'll be back at the Coliseum in a moment, right here on CATV. Small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Glycerides or trays have to do to get noticed. Heart disease and stroke? Really? We should pay her more attention. Normal triglycerides are below 150. High triglycerides increase your risk of heart disease. And if you're a woman, that risk goes up even more. After standing in the shadows of good and bad cholesterol, triglycerides, also known as the forgotten fat, is ready to share the spotlight and the attention. Next time you have your cholesterol or blood fats tested, ask your doctor about the role triglycerides play in your heart health. Remember to ask your doctor about the good, the bad, and the forgotten fat. For more information on all of your blood fats, the good, the bad, and the forgotten, go to ForgottenFat.com. And remember, normal triglycerides are under 150. This message brought to you by Sister to Sister, working together for healthy hearts. What can dinosaur tracks teach us about those long extinct creatures? On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll discuss Professor Jim Farlow's recent trip to Spain to track those tracks. Do teachers teach differently from one country to another? Professor Jeff Nowak was in Macedonia this summer teaching teachers to teach. We'll talk to him about that experience and about the new NYSTEM program. And we'll talk with the campus coordinator of the United Way Fund Drive to find out more about where your contributions are going. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Whoa.
Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Everybody to the Coliseum where IPFW enjoys a 50 to 23 lead over Manchester at halftime. Our special guest is IPFW Director of Athletics, Tommy Bell. And Tommy, I know it's short notice and I appreciate you coming over. A big event took place this last weekend at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center, and I know IPFW was proud of how things turned out, even though the, lady volley the women's volleyball team came up three points short in their bid for an NCAA bid. Yes, it was. Uh, that was the down part of the, uh, the weekend, but it was exciting, and it was a showcase for our institution to the Summit League, uh, to the conference office, and also for the three other institutions that came, and we got a lot of accolades given to us. Our staff, Ron Clark, was our uh, tournament director, was appointed. He did a fantastic job, as a number of uh, all of our entire athletic staff. I know it was a hectic weekend for everybody involved, but for you personally, in your first year as the athletic director here at the university, what was the most enjoyable part of that weekend? I think the most enjoyable part of the weekend was uh, watching that, that Friday night match against North Dakota with North Dakota was playing so well and they are so talented and then our gals uh, fought to uh, rose up to the occasion and then they just didn't back down from a fight and came out and won that and that was a big night because North Dakota was playing very very well coming into that match and uh, they did and then the championship match on Saturday afternoon it looked like IPFW felt the effects of that tough Friday night match because they lost the first two games but somehow they found a resolve one games three and four and it was tied at 11 in game five before they fell off just a little bit short yeah i know that's what happened it was like we were knocked down in the first round <laughs> but uh, they came back strong and they just started uh working hard and i tell you that fourth game was very very decisive on our part where we had a big big win uh and in, in game five you know because they only played a 15 it's who gets out to the fast start and how the breaks go your way and at 11 and 11 it just being, it was really quick and it was over right at 15. Well, it was a tremendous effort by uh, Kelly Harley Hutton's squad until they come up three points short. They did achieve one milestone. They won their 20th match in the win over North Dakota State. Seventh time in Kelly's nine years that she's had at least 20 wins with one match left to be played this Saturday night. I'm glad you brought that up, Mike. That is uh, an extraordinary accomplishment given that, uh, you know, for a number of years the institution was an NCAA one independent. And so uh, getting matches and uh, being able to maintain 21 seasons, that puts you in that program uh, category where your, your program is solid, your players plug in, they believe they're gonna win, they, and they just, it just kind of becomes automatic. And uh, I'm very excited about uh, Coach Hartley and what she's done with our program. And we have a very young team, and I believe that uh, uh, they're just getting started in the Summit League. Well, volleyball finishes up Saturday night, a match against Valparaiso, 7 o'clock at the Gate Center. Earlier on that day, uh, we'll be back on the air on CATV. Women's basketball, Chris Paul's team goes for their first win. They're going to take on Miami of Ohio for the Mid-American Conference. And the men's team is going to travel to Terre Haute to take on Indiana State. Busy Saturday. It's a very busy Saturday. I wish I had uh, uh, a jet where I could get back and forth because I'd, like be, <laughs> I'd like to be with the men's basketball team, but we'll be back in the house uh, helping our staff with our uh, two home matches that we have on Saturday. Again, Tommy, congratulations on running an outstanding volleyball tournament and uh, good luck in the future. Well, thank you, Mike, but uh, the kudos go to our entire staff because they're the ones that deserve it because they did all the work. Tommy Bell has been our guest, the athletic director here at IPFW. We'll take a break, get ready for the second half. You're watching IPFW Basketball on CA. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. What's it like when you hear your calling? Will you remember where you were? Will you ignore it? Or will you listen? What if
if it calls you to go halfway around the world? To share your skills. To serve people you've never met. To do things you never thought you could. What will you do when you hear your calling? Peace Corps, life is calling. How far will you go? Welcome back once again, everybody, to this Thanksgiving Eve edition of IPFW Basketball here on CATV. We are moments away from starting the second 20 minutes of action. IPFW with a rather uh, large lead, 50 to 23 over the Spartans of Manchester College. Manchester will have the ball first here in the second half. A quick look. I see Jeff Grabowski. I see Marcus Hanger. I see Nathan Furch. I see Doug Jackson. And I see Jamal Wade on the floor for Manchester. And IPFW comes out with Jakari Johnson, Demetrius Johnson, DeWitt Scott, Zako Egerich, and Jerron Burrow. So that's the original starting five for both teams on the floor. And here we go. Manchester, again, moving from left to right. They're in the gold uniforms on your TV screen. And IPFW, again, in man-to-man -man defense. 15 on the shot clock. Having trouble with Furch. Gets it up top to... Hanger, Hanger will launch a three, and he's off the front of the rim, no good. Rebounded by Jakari Johnson to Demetrius Johnson. The Don's on the run. Nice feed to Burleson Scott off the glass and in. The big man got down the floor quickly that time, didn't he? Boy, he sure did. 52-23. Dave Skelton alongside Mike Miles here at the Coliseum. We hope you're enjoying our telecast of IPFW basketball tonight. And a timeout called. It will evolve into a full timeout by Manchester. 19.07 left in the second half. It's the Macedons 52, the Spartans 23. We'll take a break. You're watching IPFW Basketball on CATV. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good. But with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Memorial Coliseum, IPFW on top of visiting Manchester, 52-23, as we're under 19 minutes left here in the second half. Spartans in gold with the basketball. And the shot clock's about to wind down, and launching it is Perch, just as the horn was gonna go off. It's a little bit short. Jakari Johnson with the rebound for IPFW, and here come the Dons on the attack. Demetrius Johnson, pass intended for Burroughs, knocked away. Scrum underneath and jump ball will be called and IPFW will retain possession. They still have 21 seconds on the 35 second shot clock. Let's see if they get some more perspiration mopped up here. From that first possession by Manchester after the timeout, perhaps they're going to work the clock 
And that, if, if so, they'd be working on things for future games, not necessarily this one. Jakari Johnson to Burles in the low post. Jaron is fouled as he was moving to his right. A non-shooting foul. And the foul is going to be called on Jake Cozio. His first, team first here in the second half. Personal fouls were pretty even in that first half. Seven for IPFW, eight for Manchester. Nice feed from Egerich to Jakari Johnson, who just laid it up and in. Jakari now with 11 points. And another assist for the Dons. Cozio, offensive foul. Nice play by Jerron Burroughs. Held his ground and drew the foul. And that is the first on, make that second. I mean, I'm sorry. As you see the replay, Cozio went to the glass and drew the foul. IPFW, Jakari launching a three off the rim and over the support. The ball will go over. That's a lively rim. It flipped that ball clear over the backboard. And here comes Manchester. Let's see if they can mount a rally of sorts. Pass knocked out of bounds by Jakari Johnson, intended for Jamal Wade, senior out of Indianapolis, who as a leading scorer for Manchester coming into this game, averaging over 17 points per contest, but he's been held in check to just five thus far. Cozio wants to drive on Egerich, and Burroughs is blocked by Z. Outlet to Demetrius Johnson, up the floor to Jakari, who finger rolls it in. Nice movement by the Mastodons from one end of the floor to the other quickly. Saw the open man, got the ball time. Wow, Wade uh, drove to the basket, and Jakari Johnson is saying, how could you call a foul on me, Mr. Referee? His second uh, first team foul here in the second half. Three new Mastodons in the ball game. Freshman, Ben Botts number 12, Nick Latrell number 30, and Zach Blackemeyer number 10, replacing Burroughs, Demetrius Johnson, and... Uh, did, did we keep an, uh, an extra one in there? I'm wondering. One, two, Jakari three, Johnson four. is out. Yeah, there you go. Ma uh, Manchester to inbound the ball. Wade gets it to Perch. I say Furch, uh, Nathan Furch, rather, F-E-R-C-H. This will be a good opportunity now for Coach Fife to see his uh, three freshmen. On the floor at the same yeah. time. Wade has a shot blocked. Oh, they're going to call foul on Botts. Got a piece of the ball and then came down on the arm, it looked like. Ben Botts will pick up his third personal foul. That's the second on IPFW here in the second half. 17-23 left. And IPFW with a commanding 56-23 lead, but Jamal Wade, 84% free throw shooter coming into this game at the line, and he knocks down the free throw. He's now three for three at the stripe. Took a little over two and a half minutes for Manchester to get its first point here in the second half. Mitch Schaefer comes in, number 31. Jamal Wade, I guess we said, he's a senior out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Knocks down that free throw. He's 4-4 at the stripe, has seven points overall. It's now 56-25 with 17-18 to go. Egerich inside for Luttrell. Nick nearly lost it. Boy, there's some hand strength. Yeah. Pull up yeah. jumper by Botts is good. Ben now with a tray and a deuce. And at the 17 minute mark, it's 58-25 IPFW. Jackson reverse layup. And they're gonna say no, he stepped on stepped the out of bounds. Nice move. That is the 13th turnover on Manchester tonight. Make that 14 now. They have been averaging 17 turnovers per contest. Do it, Scott to Shako Regerich up top of the key. Kicks it out to Botts. Looking for Latrell inside. The lob pass by Scott kicked away, but DeWitt stays with it. Now Latrell is double teamed and loses the ball. Coming up with it is Lorenzo Griffin. Outlets it to Jackson, who lays it off the glass and in. Doug Jackson now with five points. And Manchester that time up the floor very quickly. Here's DeWitt Scott to Botts. 
Latrell, they're gonna work it around the perimeter. Botts was four of five in three-point shots at Wisconsin. But it's Plackemeyer who knocks the long ball down this time. Good ball movement that time by the three IPFW freshmen. Coming right back, ooh. Who was hit that? It was Plack, uh, Botts rather that hit the deck along with Doug Jackson and Botts is gonna get called for the foul. I, oh, uh, no, it was gonna uh, call Egrich Egrich. instead. He got him from behind. And for Z, that is personal number one. Team foul number three for IPFW here in the second half. And Doug Jackson will go to the line for two. And the first one is good. He's now two of three at the stripe tonight. Doug was the perfect three of three through the first three games at the line. One more free throw to go. And that is good as well. So Jackson now with seven points and he'll have a seat on the bench. And let's see, it looks like Tony Harris is on the floor. Under 16 minutes to go. IPFW out in front, 61-29. Bots for three. Second tray for the freshman. Yep. He now has eight points. Ben's loosening up. And an offensive foul gonna be called on Schaefer. First on Mitch. And we've got timeout on the floor. 15.46 to go. It's the IPFW Mastodon 64, the Manchester Spartans 29. You're watching IPFW Basketball on CATV. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hey, you want? Hey there. Hey there. Hey there. Me. Shanti. Yep, Chang Yok Di. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs Sola. are making it happen. Lucky. Ha ha hu through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding La around the world. Rotary, humanity in motion. Back to the action at the Coliseum. You see a replay and you're gonna see a long three-point field goal off the hands of freshman Ben Botts. Dave Scout and IPFW hitting over 50% of their, their shots, both overall from the floor and from behind the arc, 56%. Overall, 25 of 45 and 53% from three-point range, nine of 17. I think Coach Fife would be happy with those uh, to be season <laughs> averages. Pat Lepper on the floor for the Dons. Lob pass down low to Latrell. He's triple team. But now Nick has the ball knocked out of bounds by Logan, uh, Nathan Furch, I should say. 22 seconds left on the shot clock. Jaco Egerich will inbound it. Looking for bots, but gets it way up top to Ben. Back to Z, inside for Latrell off the glass and in. Nice pass. Nice lead. Nick Latrell with five Nick. points now. And a nice feed by Egerich. Yeah, yeah. And it was a nice strong shot by uh, Latrell. Ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch, they say, by Manchester. It's another Spartan turnover. Boy, there's a differential there. 16 turnovers for Manchester, just five for IPFW as we near the 15 minute mark. Pat Lepper up top to Botts. Manchester staying in the man to man defense. Lepper launches a three, that's off the rim, no good. Rebounded by Tyler Hine. And he gets it to Harris, and here come the Spartans. Going from left to right on your screen. Oh, shot just a wee bit short by Lorenzo Griffin Jr. Here is Plackemeyer. One of the many freshmen on this team. Bots will launch another three off the rim strong. No good. And on the run is Griffin. 
He takes it coast to coast, gets the friendly roll, and knocks down the two-point field goal. Yeah, IPFW didn't expect him to go on to the hoop that time, and he did, and he scored. Well, here's Botts on the left side, gets it to Egerich, playing a high post, give and go to Latrell, who... And uh, Latrell will be called for the charge. He's playing good defense was Nathan Furch. So Latrell picks up his first foul. Four team fouls now on IPFW. Harris will have a seat. Schaefer back on the floor. Jackson back on the floor. And here come the gold clad Manchester Spartans. And watch by Latrell. Jackson kicks it off to Furch. Furch wants to drive the lane. Oh, charge called. I think it's a good call, Dave. Yeah. Furch yeah. took his left shoulder and ben, knocked Mr. Botts down. Ben was there. So Furch now has three fouls. Just under 14 minutes left. And uh, 33. That's Tony. Uh, Tony Harris. Harris. Yep, back in the Back game on the floor. In Manchester. And getting ready to make his first appearance of the night for IPFW, Armand Ademi. Armand is a 6'9 senior from Pristina in Kosovo. So he will play the low post, shall we say. And it's just about an even exchange size-wise with he and Luttrell. Chris Perkins also on the floor, number 22. Dane Fife using his bench tonight, getting that opportunity and actually enjoying it with his team way up, 66-31. Perkins banks one off the glass and in. Aggressive move to the basket. Chris Perkins now with four points. All IPFW so far tonight. Shot no good. Bots to Plackemeyer. IPFW on the run. Egerich will launch a bomb. That's off the rim, no good. Doug Jackson with the rebound. Here comes Manchester back up the floor. Griffin up top to Harris. His three ball is good. Tony Harris now in the scoring column with three points. 68-34 with just over 13 minutes left on this Thanksgiving Eve night in Fort Wayne. Perkins, a lob pass to a demi. Our men wants to drive. He is triple teamed, and he's going to be called for traveling. He hesitated with the ball inside, and uh, they ate him up. Seventh turnover on IPFW. Marcus Hanger back on the floor for Manchester. He'll inbound the basketball. Exactly 13 minutes left. 68-34 our score. Mastodon's comfortably out in front. Chance now for, uh, for Dane Fife to do some experimenting, Dave. And Manchester is uh, in the midst here of a pretty nice offensive run in the last few minutes. Schaefer, watched by Bott, kicks it out. Hanger will launch a long ball. That's off the rim, no good. Plackemeyer pulls down the rebound, gets it to Bott's, and here comes IPFW up the floor. Plackemeyer gets the return pass, I should say. Zach wants to drive, kicks it out. Perkins, spin move. The late footer is good. <laughs> Chris Perkins now with a half a dozen. 70 yeah. to 34 is our score. IPFW in a uh, zone type defense with their big man up at the top. Oh, shot partially blocked by a Demi. Saying to Tony Harris, you're not gonna score off of me. Not in here. More, in fact, uh, four new Spartans about to come onto the floor. Henry Booker, number 10. Logan Smith, number 20. Jamal Wade, number three. And Jake Cozio, number 24. 20 seconds on the 35 second shot clock. Way to inbound it. And he gets it to Booker. Booker now dribbles back up top of the key. Looks for help. Looking, still looking, now gets the ball to Smith. Back to Booker, he'll launch a three off the mark. That it hits the end line, goes out of bounds, and we've got a timeout on the floor. 11.52 left in our contest. It's the IPFW Mastodon 70, the Manchester Spartans 34. 
And this is IPFW Basketball, and you're watching it on CATV. Living with diabetes is the pets. When I wake up, the first thing I have to do is check my blood sugar. I just want to feel like all the other kids without pricking my fingers or injecting myself with insulin. Diabetes is rough on my whole family. When I was diagnosed, my mom couldn't stop crying. But imagine a cure. Right now, as many as three million children and adults are living with type one diabetes. They will never outgrow it. Some will face complications like kidney failure, blindness, and heart disease. That's why the science the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. Welcome back, everybody, to the Memorial Coliseum as you see a long three-point attempt knocked down by Tony Harris of Manchester, but the Spartans are trailing IPFW 70 to 34 with just under 12 minutes to go. And see another replay there now back to the live action. Perkins drives to the basket and misses. Eggeridge tries to get the rebound, but he is fouled by Logan Smith. That's a good aggressive follow-up by Eggeridge. It'll be the second personal on Smith, fourth here, team foul here in the second half. Dave, you were telling me during the uh, break, one of the things that you thought Dane Fife would be very happy to note is the fact the distribution tonight the yeah, assist the, factor on the number of baskets IPFW scored. Those 20 assists, and the game is only halfway through the second half, but 20 assists out of uh, tw 28 field goals, and that's super team effort. Chuck Egerich at the line, and he knocks both free throws down. Z now with seven points tonight, and it's a 72-34 Mastodon advantage. Manchester giving credit. Nobody expected him to come out with a W, and they're still fighting hard, even though they're a wee bit short on the scoreboard. They're doing some crisscross passing. Three-point shot up and in by Logan Smith, his second tray of the night. He now has eight points. And IPFW comes right back and turns With the ball turnover. over. Yep. They're eighth. So let's see what the Spartans can do at the 11-minute mark. Down 72-37. Jamal Wade going to play a little high post action to Harris. They'll kick it around, and Cozio will launch a long ball. No good. Arminda Demi with a rebound. Looking for a teammate in white, and finds one in Zach Plackemeyer. Bots will launch a long ball, and that's off the iron. No good. And a Demi fighting Cozio for the rebound, and I think they're going to call Arminda Demi for the foul. His first team fifth. Coming back in for Manchester is James Reed, a 6'5 junior from Gas City, Indiana. Eggerich and Botts will step out. Pat Lepper and uh, Jerron Burrows back in for IPFW. Jamal Wade brings the ball up over midcourt. Gets it around to Reed. They work it into the corner. Booker way back out. Little hot potato, Wade for three, off the rim, no good. Fight for the rebound. Booker pulls it down. Fresh 35 for Manchester. Reed cut off the baseline. His pass is picked off by Lepper. Nice help defense by Pat Lepper. There's Burroughs on the wing. He wants to drive on Cozio. Tries to find a Demi, but Lepper, Johnny on the spot to pick up a loose ball. Perkins, a pull-up jumper in and out, no good. Wade brings it down for the Manchester Spartans. His pass for Booker, gets through. Inside, Cozio off the iron, no good. A Demi with a rebound. Our men now with a couple of boards. Manchester hasn't thrown in the towel yet because they're playing very good defense. And uh, on the offense, they've stayed with their patterns. The shots just haven't fallen for them. Plackemeyer tried to hit a Demi down low, but the ball was picked off. And back comes Manchester. 
Booker double teamed, looks for help. Scrum on the floor and we're gonna have a jump ball. Manchester will retain possession with 9.28 to go. 26 seconds on the 35 second shot clock. Cozio takes a seat. Jeff Grabowski, the former Homestead Spartan product, comes back on the floor. Yeah, Manchester has a couple of Fort Wayne uh, ball players. Again, our score is 72 to 37 in favor of IPFW. Wade looking for somebody. And they finally get it in, and here's a three point chance. No good by Smith. IPFW with the rebound, and Plackemeyer will give it to Burroughs. Jerron is cut off, gets it to Lepper. Pat for three is good. Lepper now with a deuce and a tray. Everybody in on the act, it seems, for the Mastodons tonight. It's now 75 37 with just over nine minutes to go. And shot is no good. But uh, <coughs> Jeff Grabowski will shoot a couple. Yeah, Demi got in the wrong spot at the wrong time. Armin De Demi picks up his second foul. Comes with exactly nine minutes left in the contest. And Jeff Grabowski, we said he played high school ball at Homestead. He'll shoot a pair. His first free throw attempts of the night. And the first one is good, as you see the replay. Nice little spin move there, and I think it's a good call, Dave. Yeah, yeah, Demi. The body did hit. Uh, and he was moving toward the shooter. Latrell will come in for our mended Demi for the Mastodons. Jeff Grabowski going for his sixth point of the night. He's averaging just over 12 points a contest. And he'll try to make it eight for eight for the season from the charity stripe. And he's able to do just that. I'll say one thing, Dave, uh, Manchester is six for six at the foul line here in the this half. second half. Nine for 10 in the whole ball game, and that's excellent shooting, but no surprise. Last night they were 23 of 26 at Tri-State. Demetrius Johnson back on the floor. Burroughs looks, cross-court pass to Leper. Latrell on the baseline, looks for a cutter. And they're gonna say he double dribbled. Yeah. That that's a that's a call that's kind of tough now and then when that first pass comes in and you bat it down. Is it a dribble or is it a control? Well, eight and a half minutes to go. IPFW up 75-39. Booker. Almost looks like IPFW is almost playing a, a zone. A zone, a little matchup or a one-two-two zone. Well, or yeah, yeah. Or even sometimes looks like a one-three-one. Nice three-point field goal by Smith. He now has eleven points. Three trays and a deuce. As we near the eight minute mark, Burroughs up top. Gets it to Perkins. Perkins to Lepper and Pat will launch a three. Whoa, bingo. Boy, FFW launching the long ball here in the second half. They're now 11 of 23 from behind the arc. Four of nine in this second half. Reach in foul on IPFW. And Looks like Latrell's gonna be the guilty party. Nick will pick up his second, team seventh, and we've got a timeout on the floor. 7.46 left here at the Coliseum. It's the Mastodon 78, the Spartans 41. This is IPFW Basketball on CATV. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait. What is this? Capsicum anum, agaricus bisporus, uh? <gasps> allium sepa. Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Tell me what's bothering you. As a hot dog, I know I'm responsible for some bad things. Now they say my cholesterol is a risk factor for stroke. And how does that make you feel? Like a big weedy. High cholesterol is an important risk factor for strokes. Eating right and exercising can help. But National Stroke Association wants you to know that even the healthiest people are at risk. So ask your doctor about medicines that can lower cholesterol, like statins. It's even more important if you've already had a stroke. Visit stroke.org today. Another replay coming up from this Thanksgiving Eve men's basketball contest at the Coliseum. And 
Pat Lepper, the junior sharpshooter next on a tray. And Dave, you were commenting, we talked about equal distribution as far as assist to baskets a few moments ago. More equal distribution in terms of converted three-point field goals by the Dons tonight. Six different players have hit a, at least one three-point shot. Jeff Grabowski is back at the line and he's shooting one and one and knocks down the first. And we've got a corrected score. They're going to say it's now 78 42. Try to figure that one out. Another free throw coming. And that's good as well. So he remains perfect. He's now four for four tonight and 10 for 10 on the year. Chris Perkins with the basketball to Demetrius Johnson. Looking for help, gets it to Leper on the wing. Leper wants to drive baseline. He has cut off, double team. Latrell has the ball taken away, but we got a reach in foul gonna be called on Manchester. Yeah, I think he got him on the arm. Corey Booker is going to pick up his second, team fifth. 7.22 left. It's 78-43 IPFW. John Burroughs up top to Perkins. Demetrius Johnson will launch a three and hit. Now we've got seven guys, I think. No, yeah. Seven players with at least one three-point field goal tonight. And the Dons are back at the 500 mark, 12 of 24 from behind the arc. Logan Smith to Wade, back to Smith, top of the key. High post, Grabowski kicks it off. Baseline drive is cut off, Booker looks for help. Tries to find Reed, 10 on the shot clock. And the shot is up and good, I think Grabowski got yeah. that one. 25, Grabowski. 81-45, three-pointer up or no good. Burroughs fighting for the offensive board and Corey. Corey Booker saying, foul me? Yeah. His third. 6.38 left. And Jerron Burroughs is going to go to the line. Jerron has yet to score here in the second half. He had 10 points in the first half. And evidently, it's going to be a one and one because Plackemeyer and Botts are in for the first free throw, so it'll be a one. As you see the replay there. Well, we'll see how Jerron does now as he steps up to the line. I got two circles in my scorebook, so Kino, you gotta hit the first. <laughs> and he uh -oh. doesn't. <laughs> Put the first, pressure on him. His first miss of the light. Night, I should say. Reed wants to go baseline. Give it off. Shot up and in by Grabowski, so Jeff playing in front of the home folks. And that's a good strong move that time. He was really covered, surrounded. He scored the last six Spartan points. 6.15 to go, 81-47. FDFW still comfortably in front. Plackemeyer up top to Botts. Ben wants to drive, pull up jumper, is good. Botts now in double figures with 10 points. Shot no good, Leper with the board for IPFW. Gets it to Plackemeyer just over midcourt, 5.46 to go. Latrell in the low post, left-handed shot, strong, no good. Rebounded by Smith. Logan will bring it up over midcourt himself. Booker now back to Smith, wants to drive. And an offensive foul going to be called, I believe, on, I'm going to guess Smith will make sure. Yeah, to, with the charge. Seventh team foul. And again, some liberal substitutions on the part of Manchester. Furch back in, Mitch Schaefer back in, Doug Jackson back in, Tony Harris back in, Marcus Hanger is in. Those are the gentlemen wearing the gold uniforms of Manchester College. Pat Lepper looks for Latrell, kicks it back up top of the key to Botts, back to Lepper. Now inside of the big freshman, cross corner pass, 
Plackemeyer knocks down a three. Zach Plackemeyer with eight points. 86-47, oh, coming right back is Furch. His first points of the night. Or was that Schaefer? It was uh, Furch, you're right, yeah. 14. Perkins and Chris will launch one. It's just a deuce, I do believe. Chris now with eight. Furch coming back, baseline jumper is no good. Scramble for the loose ball underneath. And Oh wow! I thought for a second Schaefer might break his arm because his arm just left it, arm was yeah. bent straight back. And uh, you know, timeout called. And that I, leper was falling, so he called timeout before he got tied up. So a 30-second timeout. Again, want to remind you what's coming up for the athletic teams here at IPFW. Saturday, a busy day. Before we do that, let's before we do that, let's tell you about how you can get tickets. For IPFW athletic events, you can do that by calling the number on your screen, 260-481-6000, or you can go to the IPFW athletics website. It's gomastodons.com. Again, 260-481-6000 is the phone number, or the online address is gomastodons.com for tickets, and you can see there are discounts for Royal Dons Club members. Back to the action. IPFW with the basketball. Bots cut off by Schaefer and has his pass picked off by Harris. Tenth turnover now, make that 11 for IPFW. Marcus Hanger, top of the key, watched by Chris Perkins. He gets the ball to Schaefer on the wing. Schaefer watched by Bots. Hanger wants to do a little driving, cut off. Little pull up jumper by Furch off the iron, no good. Fight for the rebound. It's an offensive putback by Jackson, that's no good. Leper one hands the ball off the glass. Hits Bots. Ben gets it to Luttrell. Under four minutes. 88 50. IPFW will come off the court with a win here tonight. And Schaefer is going to be called for pushing off of Luttrell. And for Mitch Schaefer, that is foul number two. Team foul number eight, and when we come back, IPFW will go to the foul line. 349 left from the Memorial Coliseum. It's IPFW 88, Manchester 50. You're watching IPFW Basketball on CATV. I guess I'm like most kids. I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. What can Dinosaur Tracks teach us about those long extinct creatures? On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll discuss Professor Jim Farlow's recent trip to Spain to track those tracks. Do teachers teach differently from one country to another? Professor Jeff Nowak was in Macedonia this summer teaching teachers to teach. We'll talk to him about that experience and about the new NYSTEM program. And we'll talk with the campus coordinator of the United Way Fund Drive to find out more about where your contributions are going. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon. Everybody, do you see the IPFW cheerleaders cheering the Macedons on? They've done a good job tonight because IPFW is in front of Manchester, 88 to 50, with 349 left in this Thanksgiving Eve contest. Going to the foul line for the Spartans will be Mitch Schaefer. Mitch, a 6'4 freshman from here in Fort Wayne, and he'll be shooting one and one, and he knocks down the first one. Well, the Manchester Spartans are going to stay in a lot of games this year at the free throw line. And if they can knock down some threes, because they've had seven three balls here tonight. Yeah. Schaefer knocks that one down as well. 88-52. Here comes IPFW up the floor. Chris Perkins up top to Plackemeyer. Back to Perk. And a pull-up jumper <laughs> rolls around the rim and yeah, in. Yeah, that went in twice. Chris Perkins in double figures with 10 points. Now there's a steal by Ben Botts. Botts will dish off to Plackemeyer, and Zach unfortunately loses possession of the basketball. 
Yeah, that's like the wide receiver who starts to run before he catches the ball. 12 IPFW turnovers tonight. Here's Doug Jackson, wants to drive on a Demi. Kicks it out and Botts with the steal. The Dons want to run. Botts, double teamed. Gets it to Leopard. Leopard to Plackemeyer and Zach will hoist up a three and hit it. Plackemeyer in double figures with 11. Everybody in on the action. Now the question is, can the Dons hit 100? Harris, wide of the mark, put back no good. Leopard with the board. Bots on the run. Now he'll pull up and pull up and fire a three and hit. And in spite of the fact that uh, Manchester's doing, been doing a lot of substitution, uh, they're beginning to look tired. 96-52 with just over two and a half minutes left. And he'll be a reach-in foul on Pat Lepper. His second. With 2.36 left and looks like Doug Jackson's gonna go to the line. And looks like he's gonna be shooting one and one. Jerry Ford back on the floor. Free throw is missed. Armin to Demi with the rebound. And here is Plackemeyer up over midcourt. Can the Dons score 100? No, we'll find out in this next two minutes and 23 seconds. Perkins, a little shaking and baking, but he's cut off. Plackemeyer. Manchester trying to extend their man to man defense. 10 on the shot clock. Bots pull up jumper. Good. Ben Bots. You've got a nice looking jump shot. 15 points tonight for the freshman from Muncie Central. Under two minutes. Fall away jumper is good by Schaefer. Well, he wasn't going to get that shot blocked. 98-54 <laughs> with 144 to go. Plackemeyer on the wing. Perkins. Back to Zach. Ben, cross-court pass. Here's Bot. He'll launch a three. Yes! And IPFW is over the century mark on the Bot's three-pointer. And Bot's has the hot hand now in the second half like uh, Scott had in the first half. Jackson watched by Leper. Get the ball back to Griffin. Griffin in the lane. Shot a little strong. Perkins with the rebound. IPFW on the run. Perk's gonna challenge Schaefer. Left hand shot off the glass and in. Now everything going right for the blue and white. Yeah, that last shot was after a little body bump uh, sent him toward the sideline. Final minute of this contest. Nathan Furch, a fingertip, shot no good, tap no good. Armand Demi with the rebound. Gets it to Plackemeyer. 47 seconds to go. IPFW 103, Manchester 54. Win number one, all but in the books for Dane Fife in 2007. Pat Lepper with 15 on the shot clock. Bots a one, load another three. Whoa, is he hot? Yes, he is. And he's only a freshman. I think maybe IPFW would like to see a lot of that in the next four years. Jerry Ford with the ball with 20 seconds to go. Find Schaefer on the wing. Looking for Furch, can't find him, kicks it out to Jackson. Doug kicks it out. Griffin for three, yes. Lorenzo Griffin now with five points. Five seconds to go, and I think IPFW will just eat the basketball. Three, two, one, and there's the horn. This one is over, and IPFW picks up their first win of 2007-2008 with a rather convincing 106-57 victory over Manchester. Players congratulating each other. We'll take a break, get you a brief post-game report. The Dons win 106-57. This is IPFW Basketball on CATV. That book was all right. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. 
one university. Two great names. The power's out, but you've planned ahead and your food safety plan is on. You've stocked up on shelf-stable foods and a can opener in case you're in the dark for a while. You don't open the fridge, foods there will be safe for up to four hours if the door stays closed. You keep the freezer shut too, and you've kept it full. A full freezer will keep food frozen for about two days. A half full freezer, about one day. For longer outages, you move cold foods to an insulated cooler with plenty of ice or freezer gels, and you use a thermometer to ensure foods remain no higher than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If the power returns quickly, you make sure freezer foods have ice crystals and check foods in the refrigerator with a food thermometer to make sure they're at 40 degrees or below. If not, or if there's any doubt, throw it out. To learn more, log on to AskKaren.gov or call the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Meat and Poultry Hotline at one mp hotline A message from USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service. Life is good. But with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Welcome back, everybody, to the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum, where tonight on Thanksgiving Eve, IPFW gets their first win of the 2007-2008 campaign as they defeat the Spartans of Manchester College by a final score of 106-57. to And with us to talk about this win is IPFW assistant coach Dan Bure. And, Dan, I know that uh, you, Dane, Tony, uh, Jared, everybody on the staff were very pleased to see the W finally come up for IPFW tonight. You know, there's no doubt about it, Mike. We, uh, you know, we ran into some tough trouble in uh, Madison and then couldn't quite get it together last Thursday versus Valparaiso. It's, it's obviously good to get the first one out of the way and, and keep moving forward from here. I know, and I, I had a chance to watch some of the shoot around this afternoon, and, and Dane was talking about getting off to a good start, pushing the ball up the floor, and hitting some shots. And first couple of shots, a couple of three balls from uh, DeWitt Scott and Jaco Egerich put you up 6 nothing, and after that, the floodgates were open. Yeah, we need to get DeWitt going. You know, he got in foul trouble versus Valparaiso. Uh, there's no question he's been one of the best shooters in the country over the last two years, so it's important that we get him a lot of shots. And really, Z is one of our better shooters as well. So to get those two guys off to a good start uh, was good to see. And, uh, you know, the, the stat that really jumps out to me is the 29 assists. We shared the basketball tonight, and we made the extra pass. And anytime you do that, you know, that's what the coaches like to see. Dave Skelton made that comment a number of times as we saw that number build up to that final number uh, of uh, 29 assists. Granted, Manchester, a Division III school, it was David versus Goliath, but hey, everybody puts their uniform on the same way. Um, I'm curious what Dane said in the locker room. You had the big lead at halftime. What was said? You know, we wanted to keep turning it on. Uh, you know, we don't take an opponent lightly, uh, whether it's Manchester or Wisconsin. We want to play with the same toughness and the same sense of urgency with the same amount of energy every night. And that's what we did tonight. And we wanted to keep our focus. You know, we wanted to get back in transition. Manchester does a good job. And we don't want to give these guys any confidence. And I thought we did an all right job here in the second half doing that. You control just about every phase of the basketball game. I know you alluded earlier to the 29 assists, but you also controlled the glass as you out-rebounded Manchester tonight, 42 to 26. How important was that from a confidence standpoint for this team to realize that they can rebound the basketball? Uh, it's very important. You know, we, we know that we should out-rebound a, a team like Manchester just because physically we're bigger than they are. And if we're not out-rebounding them, then we have a problem. Uh, and I think that that'll give us some confidence because, you know, it's going to be an all-out battle on uh, on Saturday versus Indiana State. So I think we, we need to take that into, into account. I have to ask you, who is the three-point shooting coach on this team? Uh, I would say myself. If you were to ask Coach Fife or, or Coach Parkinson and, and even Coach Jassic and Coach Good, they'll all tell you a different answer. They'll probably all say themselves, but I'll, I'll, I'll pick myself in that group. Well, you get the prize tonight, Dan, because 17 of 30 behind the arc, and, and that's, that's awfully good shooting when you're talking about having to knock down a shot that's over 20 feet away from the basket. Yeah, you know, we, we're, we're a jump shooting team, and, and, you know, we need to make shots uh, to win games. 
And I think that, that one thing we are trying to get our guys to do more is to get some post touches because that's just going to create uh, more open looks for our shooters. Uh, Jerron Burroughs is, uh, is a good post player, and if he can get touches and get some things going down low, we'll get the inside-outside game going. Oh, I know you want to get in the locker room and celebrate with the rest of the team. Uh, again, thanks for chatting with us on the post-game show, and congratulations on win number one, hopefully the uh, first of many. So uh, good luck this coming weekend against Indiana State and then at Nebraska. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate the time. We've been chatting with Dan Bure, assistant coach for IPFW men's basketball. We'll return to the Coliseum in a moment. You're watching the post-game show on CATV. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. When it comes to dogs, cats, and kids, sharing just comes naturally. They share their toys, their beds, even their favorite snacks. But pets and people can share other things as well, like disease. Zoonotic diseases are illnesses that can be transmitted from animals to humans, like leptospirosis, or diseases that affect both people and pets, like Lyme disease. Fortunately, you can help reduce the risk by visiting your veterinarian. Your veterinarian can help protect against zoonotic disease and potentially harmful parasites. Most important, a wellness exam from your veterinarian twice a year can help detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So share affection, not illness, and ask your veterinarian about zoonotic disease protection for all your loved ones. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions? Eat your pizza, man. Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back, everybody, to the Memorial Coliseum, where earlier tonight IPFW notched their first win of the 2007-2008 season, a 106-57 triumph over Manchester College, and time to look at some highlights from tonight's game. You see the Dons on the run here. Good feed to Jakari Johnson from Demetrius Johnson for the layup. Inside feed to the freshman, Nick Luttrell from Nashville, Tennessee. Ball stolen by Manchester. Give the Spartans credit. They got whacked tonight, but they didn't give up. Good layup there. Converting the turnover. Ben Botts, what a story he had tonight. Tell you more about that in a moment. He knocks down a three. Some cross-corner passing and a long three-point field goal. There by Manchester. Another three-pointer, knocked down. John Burroughs inbounding the ball. Demetrius Johnson got into the act, as Dave Skelton said earlier. I think seven different uh, Mastodons had at least one three-point field goal tonight. IPFW coming down the floor once again. Bott unloads and knocks down another tray. Plackemeyer. Another three ball, boy. Ben Botts was really on tonight. So he ended up with five three-point field goals, and there's another one that tickles the twine. <coughs> Little move there by Doug Jackson, kicks it off, and Manchester knocks down a long ball. Again, those are some of the highlights. And look at some of the team numbers. IPFW, 41 of 70 from the floor for 59%. 17 of 30 from three-point range for 57%. The 17 three-pointers ties a school record set initially in 1991-92 in a game against the University of Indianapolis. That on seven of nine at the foul line for 78%. They had 29 assists tonight, 42 rebounds and six steals. 
Manchester, to their credit, 18 of 53 from the floor for 34%, 8 of 22 from long distance for 36%, and they hit 13 of their 15 free throw attempts. They had 11 assists, 26 boards, and 4 steals. Uh, IPFW had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 players in double figures, led by the freshman from Muncie Central, Ben Botts. Eight field goals, five of those trades. He had a game-high 21 points. Jakari Johnson had 13, and DeWitt Scott had 12. And for uh, Manchester, the former Homestead High School product, Jeff Grabowski had 11 points. Jamal Wade, their leading scorer, who averaged 17 a game coming in, held to just seven tonight, and Tony Harris had six. Uh, some other numbers of note, turnovers, Manchester 21, IPFW 12. The Dons had seven blocks to three for the Spartans. IPFW had six steals. Manchester four points in the paint favored the Dons tonight, 36 to 14. Points off turnovers favored IPFW 25 to six. Second chance points, again, the blue and white, 12 to two with the advantage. And uh, all in all, it was a good night if you are a fan of IPFW. Again, they now improve to one and two. Up next, Saturday afternoon, a 2 p.m. tip off at the Holman Center in Terre Haute against the Indiana State Sycamores, a team they defeated back in Terre Haute two years ago. And then on uh, Monday night, they'll be in Lincoln, Nebraska to take on the Cornhuskers of the University of Nebraska. That's an 8 p.m. tip. And then they'll be uh, back here at the Coliseum on Saturday, December 1st, when Mary Grove College out of Detroit comes to town that a 1 p.m. tip off. That's what's ahead for the men's team. Our next telecast, uh, we'll have, uh, as we look here, women's basketball, 7 o'clock on the 28th against Franklin. But prior to that, this coming Saturday, a home game with Miami of Ohio, and that'll be here right here on CATV, a 1 p.m. tip. Miami out of the Mid-American Conference. And uh, conference play will get uh, underway later on in December with Southern Utah. That's going to do it uh, for this uh, CATV telecast of IPFW basketball. Again, be sure to tune in December 1st when uh, Mary Grove College comes here to take on the men's team. And tune in this Saturday when IPFW's women will host Miami of Ohio. For Dave Scout and I'm Mike Moss, thanks again for tuning in. Once again, our final score, IPFW 106, Manchester College 57. Good night from the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum here in Fort Wayne, Indiana.